The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... of the Mystery Theatre, we ring up the curtain on an incredible compact which could have only one result. Death. Hello? Is this Miss Gloria Granville? Yes. Who's this? A friend. How did you get my number? It's unlisted. Just listen, lady, and don't say anything. I have information that somebody's after you. So be careful. Lock your doors at night. Watch where you're going. The world is full of bad people that you got to watch out for, so you take care, kid. Goodbye. Our drama, The Bargain, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agat Jr. and stars Mendel Kramer and Russell Horton. I shall return shortly with Act One. whenever I could to watch the car races. Without a doubt, one of the most hazardous and thrilling sports going, dating back a hundred years to when automobiles first spun their wheels. However, today, there's always the chance the thunder of the engines and the roar of the crowd could give way to this sound. I don't know if he's going to make it. Well, he sure didn't look too good when we picked him up. These racing drivers take awful chances. Who is he? You know? Yeah, sure, it's Pete Marvin. Well, he's won a lot of races. But this is the first time he's gonna lose one. Thought it was some crack up. Hey, let's get him to emergency on the double. Uh, 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 who? Dad! Uh, Pete is coming out of it. So, so may I say something? Oh, thank heaven. I was afraid we were going to... Oh, is that you, Gloria? How, how come I can't, I can't... I can't focus? Something wrong with my eyes. Among other things. Oh, darling, you have no idea how good it is to hear you talk. Oh, where am I? In the Granville Hospital. Oh, is that you, C.B.? Sitting way over there? It sure is, son. Oh, that was a mean spill. Yeah, I got... I got wiped out. Hey, Peter, you're the best driver there is. Always were. But this year, yeah. luck's been against you. Dad, I don't think we ought to talk about that now. <sighs> Pete's going to get well. We've plenty of time to think about next year. You mean it'll take me that long to get back into shape? Yeah, the bone crackers have a lot to do yet. All I remember is on the fourth lap, Somebody bumped me, and I, I spun. I, I remember hitting the wall, and then nothing. Well, you started sliding back onto the track, and Al Darrell hit you. Al? Is he all right? Oh, not a scratch. You started burning, and the fireman got you out. So it's not only my neck, but my hands and legs. I thought I was carrying a lot of bandages. Yeah, you had a run of real bad luck, son. A broken cable on the last 500. And before that, the front sneaker... Dad, blown. I wish you'd be quiet. Pete knows what happened in the last seven races. Yeah, but he doesn't know the odds. At least he doesn't realize it. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Don't you know what day it is today? Are you kidding? <laughs> what week is it? <laughs> Darling, it's your birthday. It is? Today? <laughs> How about that? Congratulations. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. And it's your 45th. 
Yeah. Maybe you've had one crack up too many. Well, you're always in such a cheery mood. <laughs> Only when you visit hospitals. Dad, I think you've said enough. You haven't said it in the right way, and you haven't said it at the right time. Gloria, I love Peter like a son. For his own good, I'm saying... Dad, please. I've got a much better job lined up for him, and you know it, Gloria. That's all I want to say. Okay. Dad, will you open this bottle of champagne, and the glasses are in the box with the cake. Pete, my love, yeah. I want you to take a good look at this cake. Baked with my own oil-stained hands. And only one candle. Because it's going to be the first year of a new life for you. I know what you're going to say, Gloria. And now that your father's left, you can say it. He, he means, means well. well. <laughs> Happy 45th, darling. <sighs> We sure have known each other a long time. Yeah, ten years. Since I started racing CB's Formula Ones. And what do you generally do every birthday? Well, I ask the boss's daughter to marry me. And what does she do? Turns me down. And you're probably right. The daughter of a man who endows concert halls, who built this hospital, well, she could do better. Oh, you talk too much. And even though you haven't asked me, I'll marry you. You will? Oh, son of a gun. My arms are all bandaged. I can't even kiss you. But I can kiss you. Mm. Oh. Well, when I saw you go into that spin, I said a prayer out loud. Don't let any harm get to him, Lord. I can't live without that crummy guy. Gloria. I'm 45, and you're 25. I loved you since I was 15, only I didn't know it. I can't wait to get out of here and head for another race. Oh, that's not the deal. What deal? Well, I'll only marry you if you quit the racing game. Hey, can I come in? Oh, Marty. <laughs> hey, you are in. Uh, come on, you, you may approach my bed. Hi, Gloria. Hey, Pete, you look like an Egyptian mummy. Tough luck, boy. Well, I wouldn't say that. It's got a happy ending. Pete and I are getting married. No kidding. Why, <laughs> she finally nabbed you, huh? Well, not bad. Hey. Not bad. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you're marrying money. What's wrong with that? Marty, I thought we were friends. What a thing to say. Well, I'm not against money. I just hope it isn't going to break up a winning team, that's all. I'm afraid it is, Marty. Gloria wants me to give up racing. Oh, now, wait a minute. You couldn't. Don't worry yourself about anything. A mechanic with your track record won't have any trouble getting a job. I'll never have as great a run of wins with any other racer. I know that. Oh, come on. Out of our last 12, I didn't even place in seven. Pete has had his last race. He's come as close to the obituary page as I want him to. You don't have to convince me. Pete's my best friend. I feel the same way about you, too, Marty. If I take a job with Gloria's dad, you're going to have one right next to me. Oh, sure, sure, you bet. Look, uh, I, I really have to go. Ah, oh, almost forgot this plant that I brought you. Hey, look at here. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's beautiful. And all those little leaves, they look like pennies. <laughs> Takes a rich girl to know pennies, huh? But you're right, Gloria. It's called a money plant. I'll see you two. Uh, shall I leave the door open like I found it? Marty, there's nothing Pete could do now we have to close the door for. Bye. Oh, that's a great guy. A money plant. That Marty. Do you suppose he's trying to tell us something? Honey, if he is... I want to make sure he gets the kind of job he deserves. Oh, I'm with you on that. I've been waiting an hour to see Pat. That's too bad. I got a lot of things to do. Remember, Marty, you owe Pat lots of money, so be patient if you want to stay healthy. You can go in now, Marty. Good luck. Hello, Pat. Oh, come in, Marty. Sit down, sit down. Well, let's get to business right away. How's our racing boy, Pete Marvin? He's doing all right, I guess. You guess? Yeah, he's just at the hospital. They bandaged him up a lot, but uh, he didn't seem too bad. 
Of course, I didn't stay very long. Oh, that was inconsiderate of you, Marty. You should have stayed and asked the doctor when Pete would be back on the track again. Well, I, uh, you know, I didn't like to bring up the subject. Well, it's a good thing I don't have to rely on you for my information. The word I got is friend Pete is going to marry CB's daughter when he gets out of the hospital. No kidding. Oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> but he's only going to marry CB's daughter if he gives up racing. And that would be a shame, now wouldn't it, Marty? Oh, you know, now that you mention it, Pat, Glory and Pete did say something about that. Hmm. You didn't think it important enough to mention? Well, no. No, honest. I mean, I was going to try to persuade him that he shouldn't. Well, I'd do that if I were you. All we want is for Pete to uh, give us two more races. At the most, three. Then everybody would be happy. Three races, hmm? I'm doing all this for you, Marty. I never forget a friend. I wouldn't want to see you hurt, you know. Look, Pat. See my side of it, huh? What if I can't persuade Pete and he's definitely decided to retire and get married? I mean, she won't marry him if he doesn't. Oh, women don't understand these things. What do they know about busted kneecaps? Look, what I'm trying to say is, how will you get your 50000 back if you cripple me? 53650 a debt is a debt, Marty. We had a business arrangement. You fix Pete's car so he doesn't finish. Our group bets against him. And we make money. Your trouble, Marty, was you didn't think that what we gave you was enough. So you borrowed from us to make side bets. Only those you lost. It would be a cinch if Gloria wasn't in the picture. That's why he's retiring, to marry her. Hmm. Haven't we mentioned that? Or are you saying that maybe we should get rid of the girl? Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't hurt her. She's a good kid. She doesn't act like a good kid to me. She's interfering with my business. How am I going to explain to my accountant a bad debt of $53,650? Oh. Hey, Marty. Oh, it's good to see you again. Hi, Pete. Hey, you look fine. They took a lot of your bandages off, huh? What did the doctor say? Well, it could take longer than they thought. Oh? <laughs> well, the older you get, the longer things take to heal. <laughs> Not that I'm going to need those reflexes anyway. Oh, racing is out, is it? Definitely? Oh, yeah. I got me a better deal. And you'll be in on it too, Marty. I don't forget my friends. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to wreck your life. No, no. I'm going to be making TV commercials for CB. You know, Granville Oil, X Racing Driver Sells Gasoline. Marty. Marty, good to see you. Hi, Gloria. You see, we're keeping your money plant watered. Yeah. Well, i got to be going. When you get downstairs to the parking lot, will you lift up the hood on the Mercer? Keys are where I always leave them under the seat. Why, oh, something wrong? Well, I think she makes a funny noise when I have her in low. I want to keep her in good shape. After all, not many brides get to drive to their wedding in a 1911 race about sports car. Okay, sure. All right, I'll leave you two. Hey, pal, it isn't the end of the world. I know, it's just that I'm sorry to bust up the team, that's all. Hey, that's not fair. We had ten years. It's time Pete moves ahead to something better. Hold on, honey. Doing TV commercials for Granville Oil may be different, but it's not better. You don't think so? Well, you ask any of the astronauts if flying a desk is better than standing on the moon. Well, I didn't mean better. It's just that time moves on, and you get older, and you can't keep doing what you used to do. I don't agree with you at all, kid. You know, there are two kinds of people, the doers and the talkers. And when Pete races, he's doing it. Yeah, but Pete's a big boy now. He's going to make it whatever he does. And I agree. He was a fantastic racing driver, but those days are over. Will you two quit talking about me as if I was dead? Now, Marty's right. I am going to miss it. But, you see, old buddy, I love this girl. And when she said she'd marry me if I gave up racing, what choice did I have? <laughs> One of the bargain. 
I'd been at the track when a car smashed on a practice run. Seen turbo motors overheat or bad skids on a patch of oil. Even without someone monkeying around, there are many ways a champion can lose a race. Pete Marvin is right to get out while he can. The only question is, is there time enough or is it too late? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Pete Marvin has had one too many accidents, and so he's getting out of the racing game and into marriage. We've learned that his mechanic, Marty Krasner, has been making money in side bets just by tinkering a little bit with the engine, enough to keep Pete from winning. But Marty overextended himself, and before he knew it, he was $50,000 in debt to a syndicate, and that's big trouble. I didn't see any way out of the mess I was in. I had no way of repaying the 50000 Tuesday, I had lunch at the Green Flag, a club for races. It was raining, so I wore my fancy English raincoat. But when I got home, I found out that I'd taken someone else's by mistake. Hello? Uh, is this Marty Krasner, Mr. Krasner? Yes, who's this? Uh, well, you don't know me. Uh, you were at the Green Flag today. Who is this? Uh, my name's Roger Ferris. Well, yes, I was eating there. What's the problem? Well, uh, I've got your coat. Oh, well, I just found out that I had the wrong one. Yeah. Well, can we uh, meet tomorrow and exchange coats? Sure, you just name the time and place. Okay, well, if it's not raining, uh, how about uh, Granville Park? Meet by the fountain. Uh, well, I'd, I'd like some other place. Okay, um, how about the uh, downtown bus terminal? Okay, that's fine. Uh, by the candy stand, okay? Great, 10 o'clock in the morning. You got it. Mr. Krasner? Yeah, Roger Ferris? Yes, yes, I've, I've had this feeling I've seen you someplace before. Well, it's possible, since we eat at the same club. Uh, is this your coat? <laughs> Look at that, they're practically the same. <laughs> yeah, you don't see many of these around. You put your name and address inside, yeah. that's how I knew. Well, you have to, you know, when you do as much traveling as I do. Um, how about a drink? Why not? Uh, there's a bar right behind the baggage check counter. Now, let's head for that booth. Uh, I'm not uh, detained. Oh, I've got all the time in the world. Now, so have I. What'll it be, gentlemen? Uh, what are you drinking? <sighs> Straight bourbon, please. Ooh, in the morning? Oh, any time. Especially when I got problems. <laughs> I got problems, too. Uh, make mine uh, scotch on the rocks. In a minute. Uh... Mr. Krasner, when I suggested we meet in Granville Park, you nixed it. Was there a special reason? Oh, it's a long story. I used to work for Pete Marvin, you know, and C.B. Granville is the money behind him. I know. Pete Marvin, the uh, racing driver? Mm -hmm. Oh, now, what, sure. That's where I've seen you in the pit stop when he rolls in. Well, he's in the hospital now, you know. Mm. I read he's going to marry C.B.'s daughter. Yeah. Pete's given up racing. How come? Not because she's got money. Pete must be worth a bundle. Uh, she's been around the track since she was a teenager. She's always had an eye out on Pete, I guess. Anyway, she got him to quit. You know, I I'm not so sure, nice kid she may be, that, that she's right for him. For one thing, everything has to be her way or no way. You know what I mean? She mm. makes the rules. You could be describing my Uncle Charles. My folks died in a car accident. They had money. I was a teenager. All their money was in a trust for me with Uncle Charles, the trustee. And I don't get a penny of it while he lives, except what he wants to give me. That could be in 50 years. It's my money, and I can't touch it. You mean he's done nothing for you? Sure. A membership in a couple of clubs like the Green Flag, and he doles out $1 bills. When I say, what about the trust fund, he says, pretend you don't have any. Get a job. One scotch, one bourbon. Thank you. So, that's where I am. Well, you mean you just accept that? I mean, it is your money. No, I don't accept it. 
I've thought of a dozen ways to get rid of my uncle, but I don't know of any where I wouldn't get caught. Look, I didn't mean to murder him. What about a lawyer? No, no, there's no way to break the trust. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do, exercise his judgment. Hmm. Funny how you and I meet accidentally and we both got reasons to uh, get rid of someone. (laughs) Problem I've been given a lot of thought to lately. If there were no Gloria in your life, Pete Marvin would get well. You'd be back in the business of racing. Yeah, if there were no Uncle Charles in my life, I'd have everything I need. (laughs) That's my dream. Mm, Yeah, but we're awake now. That's the reality of the situation. I keep telling myself there's got to be a foolproof way to solve this. I'm afraid there isn't. There is no perfect solution to our problem. Hello. Marty, I've got it. I've got it. Who is this? It's me. It's Roger. Uh, Don't you remember Roger? Yeah, you know what time it is? Look, I had to call you. I, I could. It's four o'clock in the morning. I was sound asleep. I've been awake all night thinking about it, and it, it came to me all of a sudden. Look, will you knock it off, Roger? I'm hanging up. I'm going back to bed. Marty, listen. Now, this is important. It's what you said. There, there's no perfect solution, but there is. Sure, sure. The perfect solution is the perfect cry. Sure. I'll talk to you in the morning. <laughs> hey, aren't you excited? Oh, Sure. <laughs> Roger, why'd you want to meet back here in this bus terminal? It's smelly, it's noisy. Because we can't be seen together. There's little chance we'll be noticed. Look, you gave me back my raincoat, I gave you yours. Why don't we just let it go at that? We can't. Not now. This is too good. It's perfect. Look, Roger, I don't know what you're talking about. And I want you to stop calling me in the middle of the night. I've got plenty to worry about when I'm awake. And I need my sleep. That's why my plan is so perfect. You won't have to worry about anything anymore, and neither will I. Okay, okay, what's on your mind? Like you said yesterday, the perfect solution. And I said, it's the perfect crime. And I said, there is no such thing. Uh Uh-uh, yes, there is. Why is it the murderer generally gets caught? I'll tell you why. Because he has something to gain from the party murdered, right? Something to gain. But what murders are rarely solved, huh? The senseless murder. A brick falls from a building. A man gets hit on the head. A bullet happens to hit an innocent bystander. There are dozens like that. So what makes it a perfect crime? Oh, no, that's not perfect. That's accidental. The perfect crime is when there's no apparent reason that connects the victim to the murderer. So? So? You and I both have reasons to do away with someone. You'd like to get rid of Gloria. I want to get rid of my uncle. An accidental exchange of raincoats brought us together. So, nobody knows we know each other. I get rid of Gloria for you, and you kill my uncle Charles. You gotta be kidding. Look, I'll give you all the plans of the house. His wound the best time to do it, and so on. I'll get an untraceable gun, and you do the same for me. Gloria's habits, where she goes, what time she's alone, and so on. I don't want Gloria killed. Well, you're not killing her, I am. You want her out of the way, don't you? So, some burglar, some intruder comes into her room one night. Who knows? And it's done. You see? Where you had a problem, now you got no... It's not going to work. It is. It is. It's perfect. Look, I'll call you. We'll set up another meeting. You think about it, Marty. You'll see I'm right. It's the perfect solution. The perfect crime. This is Uncle Charles' station wagon. I'm taking you out to his house to show you the setup. Now, I've made a detailed plan of the house. Stairs, his room, where the bed is, so you can get it down pat. Now, listen, I never agreed to anything. Don't you see the beauty of it? You walk in. 
I'm miles away with friends, airtight alibi. You shoot Uncle Charles and beat him. <laughs> There's not a thing in the world that connect either one of us with a crime. Listen, I thought it over. And I've decided I don't want any part of it. Oh, yeah? Well, you can't get out of it now, Marty. We're doing you a big favor. We? Don't you know who? Pat Brower? The Associates, his group? Mm Mm-hmm. I, uh, happened to mention to a friend of mine that I wanted a contract on Uncle Charles, and I met some fellas, and the deal was set up. Quid pro quo. You know what that means. You owe Pat 53000 you take care of my uncle, I take care of Gloria Granville. Your boss, the racing driver, gets a little more sand in his gearbox, you can pay up what you owe, and we all make a little extra money betting on the races. You mean you're part of this? Hmm. Pat owed me a favor, and you're going to do it. There was no accident on me getting the wrong coat, huh? Marty, you're catching on. Had to go all over town to find something pretty identical. All planned. What are you going to do to her, to Gloria? Well, she drives an old Mercer with straps around the hood, doesn't she? Now, there's a pretty steep hill down from the Granville place. Maybe one night something goes wrong with the brakes. Who knows? Now, here. You take these plans of my uncle's house. Study them. And then one day I'll get you closer. And Marty, don't you think you can renege on this? I'd started something I didn't know how to stop. If I went to the police, even if they believed me, I'd end up dead in an alley. Then Roger called. He was going ahead and dispose of Gloria. I could take care of his uncle afterwards. I knew it had all gone too far. I had to warn Gloria. So I called her, disguising my voice so she wouldn't know who I was, but would get the message. Hello? Is, uh, is this Miss Gloria Granville? Yes, who's this? Uh, this is a friend. How did you get my number? It's unlisted. Just listen, lady, and don't say anything. I have information that somebody's after you. So be careful. Lock your doors at night and watch where you're going. The world is full of bad people that you got to watch out for. Is this you, Pete? Is this a joke or something? It's no joke. Goodbye. Take care, kid. I'm sure it was Marty. I don't like it, Pete. That's why Gloria and I came here to the hospital to talk this over with you. He tried to disguise his voice, huh? Hey, now, why would he, A, pretend to be someone else, and B, call Gloria to warn her? Well, Marty might be in trouble himself. I thought that for a long while now. Things that happened on the track, he couldn't explain. Marty in trouble? Do you know that? Well, when you're as close to someone and somehow he doesn't look you in the eye when the race is over. You just know. Uh, he's on to something. Knows something. But doesn't want us to know that he knows. Something dangerous to Gloria. And he's involved? That's scary. Gloria, this is no business for amateurs. I'm going to bring Detective Jack Donnelly in on this. Have him tell us what to do. Gloria. You are absolutely sure it was Marty. The threat is there, even if it wasn't. It was. It was the very last thing he said. He said, take care, kid. He's the only one who calls me that. He says kid in a special kind of way. Of course, uh, I could just ask him to drop by the hospital and come right out and say it. Marty, was that you? Did you call Gloria? And what's it about? I know. You'll do nothing of the kind. This is for experts. I'll call Jack Donnelly right now from the downstairs phone. If he's not tied up on a case, he works fast. Over the years, I've noticed one particular quality in destructive forces. Criminal actions seem to have a life of their own. Once triggered, they act, they move, They snowball, gathering momentum, gathering weight, until what began as a grain of discontentment has become a massive stone of evil. 
I shall return shortly with Act Three. some more on the inside track. In car racing, when the green flag is up, that means the track is clear, go for the win. Danger, crack up, accident, up go the yellow caution flags. Sometimes a man can win a race even under the yellow flag. Pete Marvin, who's won many under the green flag, is retiring to marry a Gloria Granville, the oil heiress. You may have heard of her. Serve people on the dark side of the law. Which is why C.B. Granville has called in an old detective friend to find out who is threatening Gloria's life. And why. Jack, how, how in the world did you come up with this so fast? Uh, connection. So he's in on it, huh? And Marty Krasner himself. <laughs> Unbelievable. A man so well paid and liked to be making side bets against us? Now, I don't know exactly how much Marty owes, but it's enough. Uh, you say it began with that announcement in the papers about uh, Pete's retiring. Uh, they have lots of ways of finding out. But with that tie-in to Marty, for them to learn Pete has raced his last Formula One, now uh, that's an economic loss. Yeah, the whole idea of harming Gloria, so the marriage is off and Pete goes back to racing. It's, a, it's so cruel, so bizarre. To you, yes. To us, yes. But to those who value money, it's standard business practice. Besides, C.B., try to understand their morality. When a man welches on a debt, they have to make an example of him. Just in case anyone else thinks he can play it his way. Uh, you say they. How many are there? I'd say a small group. Because in this case, there's not enough money to divvy up. Two, three, maybe four at the most. I see. And uh, how are we going to protect Gloria? And net these butterflies? Well, that too. Uh, give me a little time, CB. Maybe uh, a day. I'll see what I can come up with. In the meantime, don't let your daughter out of your sight. <laughs> Time was running out. That's why I'd phoned Gloria trying to warn her. But suppose she thought it was a prank. Not serious. And if anything happened to that girl... It took me almost a week to pull myself together and call CB. I had something important to tell him. Could he see me right away? Sure, he said. Come right on over. Well, Marty, uh, seen Peter lately? No, uh, no, I haven't, as a matter of fact. He's supposed to be getting out of the hospital tomorrow. I'm kidding. I didn't see that in the paper. Well, we're sort of keeping it quiet. <laughs> At the hospital, they know, but no one else. Yeah, yeah, no one else. And you know, they should have been printing a lot of stuff about him. Is it a fact that he's taken a kind of a job with you? Uh, we were talking about you last night, Marty. Uh, trying to see if somewhere in Granville Oil there... Uh, uh, there wouldn't be a good spot. I'm not so sure I could do something else. I uh, think I'll stick to what I know. Well, you know best. Uh, but so far as Peter's concerned, Gloria's right. She wants to marry. And she knows a job with Granville Oil is a heck of a lot safer. I think he'll be a real asset to the business. And so does Gloria. Is she here now? Uh, no, she isn't. Uh, we just finished dinner and she got a call from one of the doctors at the hospital. He said he wanted to see her about Peter. Well, isn't he all right? You, you, you said he was going home tomorrow. Uh, maybe just some instructions to a future wife uh, how to take care of a future husband, don't you know? <laughs> uh, she left just a couple of minutes before you got here. What was the name of the doctor? Uh, she didn't say. She went alone? Well... Sure, why not? Look, uh, you mind if I make a call, CB? Uh, not at all. Uh, you don't happen to know the hospital's number? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I picked it out myself. You just dial G-R-A-N-V-I-L. Granville, huh? <laughs> That's pretty neat, you know. Having a telephone number spell out your own name. Granville Hospital. Uh, 
can you connect me with Pete Marvin's room? I just want to make sure, CB, that's all. Uh-huh. Hello? Oh, Pete, it's Marty. Oh, hi, Marty. Hey, they tell me I can leave here tomorrow. What's up? Pete, was there a doctor in your room 15, 20 minutes ago? Uh, no. Why? A doctor didn't make a call from your room asking Gloria to come on over, huh? No. No, not at all. No one's been in here since they took away the dinner tray at 6.30. What's this about Gloria coming over? Oh, I was just, just checking, Pete. Look, I won't keep you. Maybe I'll stop by after you get out of the hospital. Okay, Marty. Hope everything's okay. Yeah, me too. Bye now. Uh, did I understand right? One of Pete's doctors didn't call? That's what he said. I guess maybe the doctor could have called from his office. CB, do you remember which car she took? Uh, no, I don't. I, I didn't see her go. It could have been the old Mercer. She always drives that. Wish I could be sure. Uh, I'll take a run down to our garage and have a look. If the Mercer isn't there, Gloria took it out. Oh, answer that, will you, Marty? Oh, sure. I'll have to be sure which car she took. Uh, hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Granville. Oh, he, he just stepped out of the room. Can I take a message? Who is this? Uh, Detective Donnelly. Uh, who am I talking to? Uh, my name is Krasner, Marty Krasner. I'm Mr. Granville's chief racing mechanic. Marty Krasner, uh, yes, I think we've met on the track. Uh, Jack Donnelly. Yeah, well, look, I'm sure CB will be back in just a few minutes. Well, I'm leaving this phone right now. Um, uh, perhaps I'd better give you the news first, and then if Mr. Granville wants any details, he can reach me after midnight. I'll be back at headquarters then. What news do you mean? Well, there's, um... There's been a serious accident. Very serious. Where? To who? CB's daughter. Oh, no. We got a call about a crash out your way, and we found the wreck about halfway down from Mr. Granville's house. Oh, no, no. We're, we're investigating right now. Um, in the meantime, tell CB how very sorry I am. Will, will you do that? Oh, good Lord. Marty? Uh... Uh, Marty, you, you hear me? Uh, I'll be in touch first thing tomorrow. Marty? It's too late. I'm too late. Hello, Jack. It's CB. I'm calling from the house. I heard him. He just hung up. It went off without a hitch. I had to make him believe it was all over with Gloria. That way, he doesn't know if this Roger character was responsible for monkeying with the car. And Roger doesn't know if Marty didn't do it. Uh, how is Gloria? Oh, she's fine. She's hiding out just like we arranged. Uh, well, I'd better hang up now, Jack. Uh, keep me posted. I can't say I like this one bit. We're protecting the life of your daughter. Never forget that. <laughs> Get in, Marty. Hurry. Yeah. I've been around this block ten times. Where were you? That's not crazy to meet you at all. I mean, what's the matter with you? I've been calling you all week. You don't answer your phone? No, I don't. Look, I can't talk to anyone, Roger. Okay, okay. I did my part. Now it's your turn. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you thought we were comedian? Kill that girl. You got proof or something? Now, you just keep your part of the bargain, and we've got nothing to worry about. Where are we going? It so happens my Uncle Charles is away for the weekend. There'll be no one around this late at night. I'm driving you to the spot where you can hide your car. I'm not interested. Oh, I'm surprised, Marty. You don't sound as enthusiastic as I thought you would be now that your troubles are almost over. It won't be long now. You'll be back in the old pit stop. Pay off what you owe. That is what you wanted, isn't it? Not this way. Not this way. When I saw that wreck, I couldn't believe it. What did you do? You loosened the brake rod? Hey, what is it with you? Now, this is the road you'll be using, Route 54. It goes all the way. I don't want to think anymore. I just want to get it over with. And I'm glad you feel that way. In the glove compartment, I picked up a gun for you. No marks? Nothing. You, uh, know how to load a gun? No. I'll show you. Here, this is where we turn off Route 54 onto this small road that runs right alongside of the property. Around this corner, here, 
Here, you can park your car right here and you won't be spotted. There. You can see the whole mansion. Right over there. See where I'm pointing? That's the servant's entrance. Their rooms are right behind it. Only there won't be anyone there tomorrow night. Tomorrow? Is that it? That's what I've decided. Suppose I couldn't make it tomorrow. You'll make it. Uncle Charles gets back. The servants are off. But that's why it's your night. He goes to bed at nine. I want to check how long it's going to take you to leave this spot, move over to the house, get inside, pull the trigger, and get back here to your car. What do you mean, now? You, you, you want to know now? This minute. We don't leave these things to chance. We want you safe, home, and in the clear. A lot of money's riding on this. Hey, aren't you forgetting something? As they say, this is a full dress rehearsal. You'll be using this gun. Take it. It's 10.35 on the button. Now you go, and tomorrow night I expect you to do a nice, neat job on my Uncle Charles. Marty. <laughs> what do you think you're doing pointing that at me? I've had enough of you. <laughs> what are you doing? I told you it was empty. You think I'd hand you a loaded gun? When I came to, I was lying in the road with a terribly sharp pain in my neck. I touched it. It was sticky. I had just one picture in my mind. Me firing the empty gun at Roger and that look on his face as he pulled his gun on me and everything exploded. He must have dumped me in the road and left me there. I don't know if he's going to make it. we got to get him to emergency on the double. It's sort of ironical, you know. I should be headed for the same emergency room where they wheeled in Pete. How many weeks ago was it? I was the reason he cracked up. I guess he's the reason I'm here now. If I could only get up enough strength to sit up and say, hey, it's me, Marty Krasner. I didn't mean all this to happen. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? Pete? Gloria? Can you do that? Marty recovered. No doubt what helped him heal fast was learning that Gloria was very much alive. She'd been stashed out of the way. Jack Donnelly caught up with every single one of the men who used conniving and bribery to make money out of an honest sport. As for Pete and Gloria and GB, they went one way. Marty went another. No charges were ever pressed against him. As for me, I'll be back to talk to you shortly. Or you can do a lot of good with it. It depends how you make it or use it. But old Ben Franklin, he never liked it. He said, it never made a man happy yet. There is nothing in its nature to produce happiness. For the more a man has, the more he wants. Instead of money filling a vacuum, it makes one. That's what he said. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Russell Horton, Tracy Ellis, Bob Caliban, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Tammy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.